How are you all doing, Ralph here, Ralphie Customs? Uh, let's see what this week brings. Let's just uh, redress, redress, that's not the right, let's just address the elephant in the room is, I'm not moving, I'm stuck, I'm staying put, um, for lots of reasons, first and foremost, I don't want to lose what I've got, because I've created a really good space here, uh, and there might be future plans that will need the room that I've got, like, you know, so, we're going to have less uh, other people's things hanging around, it's going to be one or two jobs in, one or two jobs out, and then the space is going to be used for other stuff, which uh, I'm hoping happens, and I will let you know about in due course. So that leaves uh, maybe a false ceiling. Now, I've had a few good suggestions off you lot. Let me just explain. From side to side is 37 feet, and from the back wall where the sign is to the milling machine, is 20 feet. So ideally, we'd be looking at that, if not to this first pillar there, that first upright-ish. So about 10 feet, maybe 12 feet back off where that sign is. So 30 by 12 or 30 by 20. And that is quite some fucking coverage, you know what I mean? 30 by fucking 20 is 600 fucking square feet. So, yeah, fucking hell. <laughs> it's big, isn't it, when you say it like that? So that's the coverage. 600 square feet, 200, 300 square metres. 200 square metres. That's what we'd be looking at putting a, a false roof on or some kind of shit. I had canvas, you know. I got, like, fucking heavy top, clear top ins and a subframe of steelwork and some uprights that positioned at the end of the bench here strategically. And maybe one could respond in this side about where the edge of the toolboxes is and something off this roof because that's as high as it wants to be so still a good fucking span yeah again suggestions in the comments please so let's just uh, get these sorted look <clears throat> is it you last saw me i think machining these brackets that are still tacked together what I'll do now, I'll use the sander to break those tacks, clean those tacks off and separate them. Um, and then tack these foot peg mounts in square to this bottom edge so like They need to go straight up because the standard ones go straight up. So that's what I'll do next. Hey, righto, so they're now tigged in. Put one over if I can. Which you can't. Come on. So, come on. Yeah. So we've ticked those. And we'll let them cool down and then we'll look over, go over to the bike with a MIG. I'm going to tack them on with a MIG in suitable position we also have our tube don't we wherever i've put the fucker here that we're going to need to make a support for now on the stocker it's a bit higher than the foot peg but i don't think it needs to be i'm hoping it don't need to be in which case i'm going to make something fucking super for it like i've just turned the fucking wireless down do you know me, me members me channel members all know because they see all the shit like. I've had to read, upload an edited version of my last video that will go out just before this one. Um, because I got picked up with a copyright fucking thing on one of the songs coming from the radio. 
fuck me. You know what I mean? Like 30 seconds of a song and some fucking algorithm Autobots picked it up. Um, and we don't need too many of them. Anyway, I've digressed. We've got one on look. This is the standard linkage that comes with these foot controls. And we've cleaned up around this area, ready to take this beefy bracket, which we have now tacked in place. The problem being, this is where it gets fucking tricky, ain't it? Is matching it up this side, the other side like, so. I've given that area a nice dress up, ready to take the bracket. And I mean, I think all we can fucking do is eyeball it. And then what I did, I used that fucking level box angle finder on the top of the tank to a zero and then a zero off here and then I bought it fucking this way and that way um, that's gonna be your fucking best bet so that is gonna go somewhere about there yep and then from there we're gonna work out where the back brake is gonna sit how that's gonna work in conjunction with this fucking with a lever of the diva um, that's next then so we'll crack on and fuck about and get this side tacked on too. Right, we've had a rejig, have dropped them down. They now hang below, which I think sits better, but they might hit the ground, you know, they might be in the way, in which case you can flip the mountain over and have them up. That's not a definite, is it down or is it up? But they are, I don't know if come or pick it up, they look tiny from here. They are fucking in line and straight and fucking true, so. Yeah, happy days. Now what I need to work out is how we're going to make this fucker work. I don't think it is. <laughs> I said, oh, fuck's sake. I think we're going to have to go back to up because this shit's going to be hanging below the frame. And that's not good. Hold on, two secs. You're all right. Flip that one over. That's up. One up, one down. One hung low, and that way we can kind of uh, fucking hell get that in somehow. It's going to be monumental. I, I just don't fucking know. Do you know what? I don't fucking know how this is going to work. I'll get the brake linkage. Which again is not a definite. I mean, that can be fucked about with. But I'll, I'll have a look at the standard thing and see. It's got to go up. It's got to be above like that. That's got to sit something like that. There's no two ways about it. Uh, it can't go below the fucking frame. That's just ridiculous. That can hit the ground like. And you never reach the pedal. So it's got to be somewhere like there. Surely it's fucking Christ. Ain't it? Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Up's the one, just for clearance on the rear brake. So we'll swap it back over on the other fucking side. I follow a guy, Chris Allen. Check him out, Chris Allen, professional struggler. He's a, a mobile heavy goods and plant mechanic. He's fucking brilliant, bless him. And I've, I've recently uh, had a couple of comments to and fro with him, like, and fucking, he's realised that. I've realised it is just like me. Yeah, go and check him out. Right, Chollers. I fucking got this. Look, this is a standard angle of the dangle fucking linkage, and it's got to go up like that. There's no doubt. There's no fucking doubt. There's less doubt in that than there is in Gwen Stefani. So that stop there, that I'm not showing you very well, that Allen bolt there is a stop. Uh, and that's kind of going to have to go fucking something like that. So I'm going to make a bit of tube. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make a bit of inch tube. I have a cunning plan. I'm going to make a bit of inch tube, I think. I think, or a plate or something. But I'm going to bridge this gap, obviously. That's what I need to do. So I'm going to let go of you. Uh, and get a fucking rule and have a measure and see what's what. Right, 
what we've got here is obviously a bit of tube and we're going to cut it out to uh, one inch and we're going to use it the bit that I've cut out you can't see there's a cutaway this side like but that's going to be the mounting for that um, rear brake pivot so what I should probably do is get this started you see I've got a jack under it because I don't want it droopy droopy but I will just get this started while I'm slobbering silly bollocks and a bit of lube on for you guys uh, and then fast forward through the cutting right now just finishing off this bit might go flying off but it can do it won't hurt anything there you go get rid of that there you go happy days so now Just get this out of the vice for you, show you. And we've created a little slice one end. Come on, focus. And slice the other end. I've already cleaned this end up. I'll go and give that a deburr. And I'm thinking that'll sit on the frame with the back brake mount running through it quite nicely. Oh, yeah, look. You see how that's sitting? Uh, and then we can put a bit of support across the top corner, like to get it to hold everything where we need it to be. I am thinking that that is going to do it nicely. So I'll just take this all apart now and then go and tack that bit on where it needs to be and think of some way of making a nice corner support and I think that that will be absolutely fucking puckart geezer. So we'll get that welded in place like that uh, and then I'm going to make a little gusset for the corner and we'll probably put a gusset here on the frame. You'll see. That's, I'm just going to tick that up now. Right, now we've got a bit more of the same same sort of action but with a much bigger hole saw of 35mm, so 10mm bigger. Uh, and we're just going to cut... Wait up, we're not. Because it didn't like it, look. I thought I'd give it a go with the auto feed and... Not having it, so we'll do it by hand, look. We'll just work our way steadily through this bit of 10mm plate um, and that's going to give us the relief that we need to make a couple of uh, gusset plates for that back brake thing, you'll see, see how it works out. I know, so now we can cut here and here and it'll give us a nice little gusset to support this outrig a bit like where the back brake lever goes on the outside this end line. So there we go, little focus. That's got the, it's gonna fit on the frame here and then the brake pedal comes out this side, it's upside down in the vice at the minute. So that should stop it from fucking moving about quite nicely, shouldn't it? We need something similar for the frame um, and we've got a chunk of this left with curves and shapes and I'm thinking maybe this cuts some off here like, but we'll have a look. We'll let that cool down a bit and then uh, we'll go and offer it up and maybe get a tack on with a MIG and then look at uh, making a gusset plate and getting that tacked on and all. Okie fucking dokie. There we have it in situ. Look at that support, that under, under rider, overrider, gusset in the corner and then we've got tube to tube action. I'm seriously considering putting another one in there. Just fuck it, why not, you know, because belt and braces, I don't think it'll go anywhere, but it really don't want to go anywhere, so uh, I'll have a think, I'll have a look, I'll see about it, and I'll let you know in the next, uh, in the next clip. Right, we've done it, look, we've put that little cutie in there, I don't really like that, I think it looks fucking gleaming, and he's tougher than a butcher's dog. So that's the pegs mounted, rear back brake sorted, rear back brake, not the front back brake, rear brake sorted. Doinky doinky doinky, look. I think we'll do the seat next. And now I'm gonna have a brew. Oh, well I've got you, hold on. Thanks, a huge thanks to everyone for the suggestions about keeping the place warm in the winter. I've just had the landlord in. 
we've just had a word and sorted it and what I'm going to do is buy the biggest fucking tarpaulin you've ever seen in your life well I have anyway clear reinforced and I'm going to drape it like Alibaba's fucking tent off that back wall and on top of this port cabin and across and then probably have a drop down in the winter with slits in for getting jobs in and out and in the summer have it rolled up and out of the way so I'm just waiting to see if one of you will be kind enough to buy this milling machine and then I can move that one over there I might I'm tempted to move the lathe up that end although I probably won't to be fair put the milling machine there to get me all in one corner under cover like because uh, that'll line up with the edge of the tattoo studio nicely so yeah that's what we're on with so onto the seat mount now what i use at the front is these these come ready made i'll show it you once i've tacked it on um i've got it in position there so i don't really want to move it but these bolt underneath these solo seats uh, if you can see there look, it's like a strap that bolts on there and they are fucking peachy i've got one on my triumph I use them on everything. Everything that I can that has this style of seat gets one of these brackets. They just do it. And what I'll do, I'll tack the ends with the MIG and then I'll TIG round it when I weld it up. So they just come out super neat and tidy like and certainly strong enough. I'll get that tacked on and then I'll show you the next bit of the procedure. So, that's on. I've got that tacked on. And you can see, look. It comes here with this bracket it bolts on and you can move it where you want it and all the rest of it I think we're gonna be somewhere around there but what we need to do I'll probably be a bit further back is pick up on these springs now I use these all the time again what they're gonna do is bolt on there at the top but if we have a bolt on fitting at the bottom it's a right pain in the arse when it comes to getting your seat up to do anything underneath in the electrics box and all that so what i do is make on the lathe which we'll be doing next i turn up uh mountains with a little peg that comes up that goes through the hole in the spring and, and it takes a split pin or an arm clip or whatever you want to use so you can you can pull the pin out uh Worst case, loosen them off a little bit so you've got some wiggle room and then lift your seat up. So that's what we're going to do next is make these. We're going to decide where we best go. Oh, we need that nut to miss the frame. So we'll come back to there. Uh, and then we want a bit of gap for the mug guard and a bit of boingy boing. Yeah? So we'll get a spring on. We'll get the springs on the seats and we'll have a look and decide how tall. I'll normally go about an inch and then the peg bit. So we'll look at doing something like that. Right, with them springs on, you know, it don't really want much of a lift. I've got to have a bit of a wrap around for a weld. So if I make them half inch, so it lifts the bottom of that spring up half an inch, which is the thickness of my little finger, then I reckon that'll be about right. So let's go in search of materials Look. a bit of that do it we counterbore the back and we machine it out yeah this is gonna be uh, I need a bit more than that but I'll find a bit that's too short it's got the threaded hole in from when we made the foot peg hangers so I need a lump of that and then we'll get machining right oh folks so we've got a bit of that uh, 30 mil bar I think it is Let's have a measure. I've got that bit of uh, 30 point something it is on that bit. It's a bit rough. But I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to clean it. I want, <coughs> according to my calculations, when, you'll see, it's better than it looks on paper. We need 20 mil at 8 mil diameter and 20 mil at 25 mil diameter. So we'll put the meat, we'll turn this all down to 25 mil. Let's get it on. Give it a face up. Like so. Although there is only going to be 
the last eight millimeters that will survive and I'll give this a clean up and see oh hold well on I'm on the wrong feet and speed yeah that won't do like that it's not very well focused for you is it so I'll try and there you go right fuck me so we are out bear with Come on, these calipers are a bit stiff, not in a good way. We are at 28.8, so I'll put that into my readout. X 28.8 equals, and we want 25.4, don't we? So, go 27.4, and then we'll take off the uh, remainder once we get this bit down you can join me then right here we go i put a bit of oil on now i'm gonna i keep meaning to ask about this so you see people do there as i have putting oil on the, the outside of the job but really the cutting edge is in this corner it's right in that fucking corner there so not actually getting any oil is it all you're doing is burning the oil as the chips fly off. You're not really protecting the tool the best way you could. So you're better off applying it right where you want it, like I am now. So that will be just fucking pinching. There you go. So that's 25. God. Now we'll touch on this end, we've already zeroed where we've touched on this end, but we'll turn that down to 8 mil for 20 mil. Uh, you don't need to watch that, you can see me when I'm there. In fact, I just want to share you this 80, 80 thou depth of cork look. Get a little bit of chatter. There's nothing I can do about that. If you just have so much of a job going on, right? Get near the chunk, that gets less. But it's fine for this. What I wanted to show you was the finish. No oil, no fuck all. There's a little bit of chatter going on, so you can see a few wavy lines if the company will pick it up. But generally, that's really good. These carbide tips love it fucking hard and deep, don't they? You know what I mean? Fast, hard and deep. So, there you go. Right, I'll see you in a minute. Oh, I know. And this is to size 8.2, eighth of an inch which will go through those springs. So, that's down to 20 millimetres, which is coming up there. And we'll have a clean up, not happy with that. So we'll go there, look. We're not bothered that we're a little bit over and we want a bit of a radius in that corner. So, yeah, that'll do. Now what I need to do is shape this top like that give that a quick clean break that edge I'll give that more than a quick clean that finish ain't great so, yeah, nice and gentle there we go and that's about there that needs parting off now or cutting in the bandsaw which is what I'll probably do and then we spin it round, we're going to counter bore up here because we're going to machine a scallop and we're going to drill a cross hole. So, two more operations to go. Right, so here you are on the parting off of this bit. I'm not going to do it on the bandsaw. You may as well see me part it off. I'm going to probably try and catch it, but I'll probably fumble it. Hey, <laughs> as I do. And that'll end up in the chip pan or the swarf tray, as we call it in this country. A chip pan's what your mum used to cook chips in before we had deep fat fryers and air fryers and the like, and oven chips. Remember oven chips? Most people still have them. I'm not keen. There you go. There you go. We're getting on, aren't we? Uh, join me for the next thrilling instalment, yeah? It just leaves me to thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, give us a sub and a thumbs up. Check out memberships, buy me a coffee, merchandise, and all my friends in the description below, and I'll catch you on the next one.
Big love, everyone. See you soon.